Swami, what is your first take? We can argue about the fact that the government has decided not to walk on the path of fiscal consolidation, but on the expenditure side, sir, it's a big commitment. Well, this is a risk-taking budget. It is a charge for investment. It is a non-populist budget. There have not been a huge amount of giveaways as uh, I might have thought, as some others have thought. So they've decided that we are going to take the risk of inflation. We are not going to go for fiscal consolidation. We are not going to worry about that. The, we are going to have a charge of investment, capital expenditure of 35%. Uh, no particular SOPs for agriculture, very marginal changes out there. Very marginal changes overall. It's a budget with a remarkably few changes in the tax proposals, uh, hardly any change. The emphasis has been on better collection and using this buoyant uh, tax collection for a charge on investment especially on infrastructure, especially on the railways. The big new idea I say is the digital rupee. Now, it's not clear as to what exact shape this will take, the implications for payments, the implications for taxes, all this will be spelled out, but that is the one completely new thing and we need to know a little more about that. But as I said, the budget, the main, this is aiming gung-ho for growth. It is saying, let me have a large amount of investment, which is going to be uh, the government itself will take the lead in this and the animal spirits of the private sector will be harnessed. It will come along in joint ventures. And on the other hand, through financing of the pushing startups, pushing the digital age. So this is a very forward looking budget. The risk it's taking is of inflation. I might add that the one thing that nothing is being said about the very great disappointment of asset sales in the current year, uh, the very slow rate of privatization, the very slow rate of uh, the national monetization pipeline of selling old infrastructure, uh, the fact that you know you auctioned 150 railway trains, uh, passenger routes and nobody even bid. So you know the huge failure on gaining uh, revenue from that side nothing has been said in the budget or addressed on that particular thing. Uh, and I think something should have been done there. Nevertheless, it is a bold budget going forward on investment, but I do wish something more had been said on much more rapid asset sales. Somebody should be taking the hit for the very, very slow progress so far. Okay, so Swami, if I say that India has been a COVID survivor, we revived last year, this budget is, in a sense, ensuring that we thrive and we accelerate further. The focus is on expenditure and the government is saying that rather than uh, walking on the path of fiscal deficit, we will take the risk, we will ignore inflation for the short term and we will do all the heavy lifting in terms of capital expenditure. There is little populism in this budget despite the rollback in farm loan. And Swami, this in a sense is a right message, I guess, for everybody that the economy, which in a sense has recovered rather unevenly, the priority right now is to ensure that the growth goes higher and growth will only go higher when big sectors uh, will get a push from the government spending. Is that right, Swami? Absolutely, absolutely spot on. So this is a growth oriented budget, capex oriented budget, uh, not populist, not attempting to please lots of people, remarkably little changes in taxation. I mean, that is, uh, it is really notable. So, you know, the aim, the a lot of budgets, the emphasis on the tax side, here the emphasis on the spending side. But as I said, the great failure, the great failure has been to get enough asset sales. And on that, nobody is taking the responsibility for the failure. And we have been told nothing as to how to avoid a continuation of this failure. The finance minister said Air India privatized and some decision taken on the launch. Okay.